Welcome to our first video on physics. This will be our very first video on physics. Let's discuss simple AC circuit. Alright? For simple AC circuits, unlike what um, you learned on DC, the AC circuit, the current flowing in AC circuit, flows in either direction. The current that flows in AC flows in either direction. But um, the theoretical aspects of this um, topic may not be covered in this first video. Although there is no, um, we don't have much thing to talk about. We will talk about the theoretical aspect of AC circuit. So what we have here majorly is majorly calculations. So I want to um, show some formulas. Uh, maybe some are by way of shortcuts um, on how to solve questions of simple AC circuits without wasting our time. <clears throat> Unlike what we learned in DC, there's a law called the Ohm's law. The Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that if this is a metallic conductor, if this is a metallic conductor, that the current passing through a metallic conductor is Directly proportional to what? To the potential difference across its terminals, provided that temperature and other physical conditions of the conductor are kept constant. And from Ohm's law, we learned that V is proportional to I. So that when we remove this, we have V will be equal to what now? I R. This R becomes the constant which is what resistance plus it is important to state that ohm's law is also applicable to ac but the resistance we use in ac are different unlike what we did in dc remember this is for dc but in dc we only make one use of what now external resistor the other resistance we are normally encounter is called the internal resistance, which is written with small letter R. All right, but for AC, we have certain um, the resistance in AC. Of course, what is resistance? First of all, I will define resistance. Resistance can be defined as the opposition given to the flow of current in an electrical circuit. Now. For simple AC circuit, we have different resistances. If I should use that word. Now, these are the following um, resistances we have in simple AC circuit. There is one that is called reactance. Reactance. Reactance is an opposition given to the flow of current in an AC circuit. So that when we talk about reactance, is of two types. Of two types. We have the capacitive reactance and we have the inductive reactance. So I will call them XL and XC. Whenever we see XL or XC, what does it mean? I will write it here. XL stands for what? Inductive reactance. Inductive reactance. What does it mean? This is a resistance delivered by an inductor. That's why we call it inductive reactance. Of course, reactance is what? Opposition given to the flow of current in AC circuit. So that when we discuss reactance being resistance in simple AC now, what we have there, they are of two types, XL and XC. The XL stands for what? Inductive reactance, while the XC stands for what? Capacitive, capacitive reactance, capacitive reactance. All right, these two terms has formula for calculating them, which I will put here immediately. So XL is equal to what now? Two pi FL. Y X C is equal to one all over two pi FL. Our L stands for what? Inductor, inductor. Inductor and that inductor is measured in what now in Henry in Henry H 
take note of the units because physics has to do with a lot of conversion. Then what of here, where we have F and C, of course F stands for the same thing, then C stands for what now? C stands for what? Capacitance of the capacitor, or I will say capacitor. Capacitor, capacitance of the capacitor. All right? So when we are asked to calculate the capacitive reactance, we use this formula, 1 divided by 2 pi Fc. Of course, our pi remains a constant. What is pi? Pi is what? 3.142 when we are solving problems with this formula. All right, moving on. Moving on beyond these two terms. Permit me to wipe this part. Permit me to wipe it. If you need this... Um, parameters here, pause the video and copy out the formulas here. Very, very important. Alright. Alright. Now we have established that XL is what? Inductive reactance. Why XC is capacitive reactance. Up next, there are some formulas I'm going to write down here. Formula 3. We have formula for root mean square, which is called I root mean square, I R M S, is given by the formula I naught divided by root two. All right, let me write that well. I naught divided by what now? Root two. All right, what is I root mean square? We call it the root mean square current. So I will say. I root mean square stands for what? Root mean square current. Alright? Root mean square current. Now, in the other hand, number four, if I change this to V root mean square, V root mean square, of course, you already know that V root mean square will be what now? Will be V naught over what? Root two. But again, what are I naught and V naught? I naught stands for what? The peak current. Peak current. Peak current, or we we'll call it maximum current. Maximum current, or we we'll call it the peak current. Or some persons still call it the amplitude current. The same thing goes with V naught. What will be V naught? V naught is what? The peak voltage. Peak voltage. Peak voltage. Or we say it is the what? Maximum voltage. Maximum voltage. Maximum voltage. Also, when we're looking for I naught. It becomes I naught becomes I root mean square multiplied by root 2. Alright. Moving on beyond that. Moving on beyond that. Moving on beyond that, um, there's some other formulas that we have. Number five, number five, number five. Although before I write number five, what is this root mean square? Root mean square um, value of anything. It could be current, it could be voltage, just as we are seeing here. Root mean square value of current is the current that will produce the same heating effect in that AC. All right. I said I want to spare us all the theoretical aspect of this topic and focus on the calculation so that by next video, we talk about the theoretical aspect. But we don't have much thing to talk about in the theoretical aspect of this. So number five, we have another formula, very, very important. V will be equal to V naught sine WT. Then six, I will be equal to what? I naught sine W C. Of course, we know that um, omega W is given by the formula W is equal to what now? 2 pi F. Very, very important for both cases. So I can substitute the W here and put 2 pi F or remove the W here and put 2 pi F. Having given um, you these six formulas, very, very important. Please take note of them. That's why I number them. We require them to solve calculations depending on what the examiner is asking us to find. Having given all these formulas now, we talked about reactance. Now, 
Apart from the X C I said earlier and X L, remember these are two types of resistances. This is a, a resistance or a reactance because reactance in AC is all is resistance. So X C resistance delivered by capacitor. I will call it what now capacitive reactance. Why this one is what resistance delivered by inductor, and we call it what now inductive reactance. Beyond these two, there is a total resistance. Now, it now, it now, it now tells us that, and examiner can tell us, in an ROC circuit, what will it mean? It will mean that the circuit contains only external resistor and capacitor. What did the examiner say? RLC circuit. It then means that this circuit contains resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Now, depending on what you are giving, you can also say RL, meaning that it contains only resistor and inductor. Depending on what we have, the total opposition, the total opposition, the total opposition to the flow of current in an AC is what we title as impedance, which I'm going to write now. All right. So we said impedance, impedance. What is impedance? We say it is what? The total opposition. I will represent it by letter Z. We we'll represent it by letter Z. So I'm going to write the formula here. Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared. Please take note of that. R squared plus X squared. R squared plus X squared. Square root of them. And the square root covers everything. What is R? Our R is just normal external resistor. External resistor. External resistor. What is our X? Our X can be... Our X can be XL or XC. Now, our X can be XL or XC, depending on what circuit is described. If you imagine that I'm in a question is saying a circuit contains resistor and capacitor, it means that this X here will be what now? XC. What if the question says, look at what I'm talking about, look at what I'm talking about. Look at it here. Permit me to wipe this part. Imagine a question, is, they're asking us question now, and we discover it is only R and L that is involved in that AC circuit. Then what will be impedance in this type of circuit? A circuit that contains only R and L. Look at what impedance will be now. Impedance will be z equals to square root of r squared plus. Now, this time around, because it contains only r and l, what will be my x? What will be my x? Will it be x, l, or x, c? Of course, it's going to be what now? x, l squared, because I'm dealing with r and l. What if the examiner says, the circuit contains R and C in an RC circuit. What will be my impedance? The same way. Z will be equal to the square root of, of course, R squared plus this time. What will be my X? Will my X be XL or XC? Of course, because I'm dealing with C now, it's going to be what now? XC squared. Um, students normally make this mistake of not um, using um, the square root that covers everything or they forget to square these two. Please, make sure you don't make such mistake because any mistake there will give you the wrong answer. Remember I said that this is the first video on AC circuit. That will be the second video where we'll, be, we'll start solving questions um, um, in this topic. Alright? Moving beyond this, moving beyond this now, moving beyond this now, 
Now, look at this condition. What if the examiner says the third condition now? So, this is condition one, condition two, condition three. In the condition three now, the examiner will say it contains RLC circuit. Remember, I'm writing it as RLC, but the equation can say RCL, depending. It does not necessarily mean that they must follow RLC. But when you hear RL, it means that the circuit contains R and L. And what is R? External resistor. What is L? Inductor. If you hear R and C, it means that the circuit contains resistor and what? Capacitor. Then again, it means that for the impedance, what will be involved is the two. What if the, if the examiner says RLC means that it contains the three? Now, when it contains the three, we use this. Z will be equal to the square root of R squared plus XL minus XC all squared. Look at that. XL is always longer than XC. That's why we subtract, we subtract the XL from the XC. So look at this third case here, the third case. When we have the three, look at the formula very well. Impedance, which is the total, total, the whole resistance becomes R squared plus what? XL minus XC R squared, when you take the square root. Moving beyond this, please, you can pause the video and copy out all these formulas because in our next video, we'll start making use of all these formulas. All right. Moving beyond this, moving beyond this, moving beyond this, moving beyond this, moving beyond this now. We have other formulas that are very, very, very important for, um, to us in AC circuits. Now, there are so many things we we'll need to talk about, but I'm... Um, just saving us the time for uh, not talking about stories. So we are moving straight to the point. So having given you the formula for impedance, remember that I told you at the uh, start of this class that we have what is called Ohm's law, which is written as V is equals to what class? I R. It then means that this formula holds for AC as well. But when we want to use this, permit me that I can write V is equals to I X C. Why? Because X C is also a resistance. What type of resistance? The one delivered by a capacitor. Therefore, I can remove this out here and put X C. Again, I can write again V is equals to what now? I X L. Why? Look at R, look at X, look at XL. Three of them are interchangeable. Now I can put XL because this is also what? A resistance delivered by what? Inductor. Delivered by inductor. Delivered by inductor. Now what about the last one? I can write V is equals to, I can write V is equals to, V is equals to, I Z. Look at that. Is Z not a resistance? Yes, it is a resistance. What type of resistance? Total resistance. And what do we, do we call that? Impedance. What does it mean? It then implies that in the last formula, that the Z is the total resistance. Meaning that this current will be the what now? The total current in the circuit. Did you see that now? Also means that this voltage will be what now? The total voltage in the say, circuit. So remember, it means I can call this VL and I can call this now VC. Take note of these formulas. Take note. Very, 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 very important. When solving questions in AC circuits. Now there is this condition in AC circuits. Um, I will need to talk about. And what is this condition? That is resonance in AC circuits. Resonance. When does resonance occur in AC? When does resonance occur? I'm going to put that there. Please permit me to remove this so you can pause the video and write this out because I want to remove that from there. Alright, moving on. 
Moving on, moving on. Again, before I move further, remember that it is possible I make anything here the subject of formula. I can make this guy subject of formula because VC over I. Like that. Alright? So, talking about resonance in AC. Resonance. Resonance in AC. Resonance in AC. Resonance in AC. The plan why making this video is to make physics topics very easy and very simple. And that is why I choose to go this way. So I will not bother you by driving some formulas that um, are not required. I will only give you the final formula. You just need the final formula. Put it down and solve your question and get your correct answer. Simple. Now, conditions for resonance to take place in AC. Conditions for resonance to take place. Condition 1. Condition 1. Our XC will be equal to what now? XL. Remember I told us that this is capacitive reactance Why this is what? Inductive reactance When two of them are equal We said that resonance Has taken place in An AC circuit Condition 2 for resonance To occur in AC Condition 2 Our R will be equal to what now? Z Our R will be equal to Z Then again Number three condition, our circuit we have a unit power factor. A unit what? Power factor. A unit power factor. Alright? Number four, number four condition for resonance to occur. Face angle, face angle, face angle will be equal to what now? Zero, zero. Phase angle will be what? Zero for resonance to occur in AC. Then lastly, for resonance to occur, resonance frequency. What will be the formula? It will be 1 over 2 pi root 1 all over what now? LC. Very, very, very important. All right? So when we want to get the resonant frequency in AC, we use 1 over 2 pi square root of 1 over LC. I don't want to bother us because there is a way we can still manipulate some of these formulas to give us more formulas from there. But the only thing we need now is um, all what I've given below. Alright? Alright. So... Take note that this formula is very, very important. And um, all the formulas I've given here are the formulas we need when solving questions in AC circuit. Now, let us look into some questions so that in the next video, there will be um, a lot of questions we are going to solve. Let me just solve one or two questions with um, some of these formulas we have written out from the beginning of this class. All right? Alright, let's look at this first question here. Yeah? Um, like I said, we will solve a lot of questions under AC circuit so that you, by the end of many questions we have solved, you become perfect in solving questions in simple AC circuits. Alright, look at this question. An AC source is defined by the equation this. V is equal to 150 sine 300 T. Full stop. If the circuit has 5, what is that 5 H? 5 Henry inductor. So let me, solution to the problem. Solution to this problem. Um, whenever you see any question in physics and you want to solve, please, before you solve, write out your parameters. What do I mean by parameters? What and what did the examiner give to you? Now, like here now, I'm giving 5H inductor. 5 Henry inductor. Alright? So I'm going to write my inductor L as what now? 5 Henry inductor. And what? 8 ohm. Look at this. 8 ohm resistor. Mean that my R is equal to what now? 8 ohms. Then again, look at the equation I'm I was given, I was given V equals to 150 sine 
300 t and what did it say i should find question a says find the period and frequency signal find the period and frequency signal period is t and i don't know it but what is the formula for period period is 1 over f meaning that i will need to calculate frequency before period because period is one of our frequency now how do i go about this see this now see this now i'm going to go by way of comparison remember the formula i gave you v equals to v naught sine wt look at these two equations v is this sine 300 t then our formula original formula i gave you v is equals to what v naught sine wt now by comparison what is v naught 150 so v naught becomes 150 then this is sine and this is sine this is w this is 300 mean that what is w w is what now 300 300 and again remember recall again that w is equal to what 2 pi f Meaning that I can equate 2 pi f with 300. So I will solve this way. 2 pi f will be equal to what now? 300. Alright? 2 pi f is what? 300. Now, can I get my f? Yes. Do I know pi? Yes. I have said that pi is what? 3.142. So I'm going to solve like this. 2 times 3.142 times f will be equal to what 300 so that f becomes this side divided by everything here 300 divided by 2 times 3.142 and if we point our calculator with, uh, on this we are supposed if i grab my calculator and punch it although the answer is supposed to be 47.7 but let's point the calculator and what's the unit Hence, I've gotten my frequency. Frequency is what? 47.7 hertz. Let me go over it again. This is how I solved it. This is the original equation uh, given to me in the question. This is my formula. The moment I've written out my formula, I compare it with what is given to me. For questions like this, this is how we solve it. So we'll go by comparison. V0 is 150. Look at it there. Look at it there. Sign, sign. W is what? 300 w is 300 then because i'm having 300 t and i'm having w t and again w has formula 2 pi f then that w is 300 so i'm going to equate 2 pi f which is w equals what 300 which is w so by the time i do that pi is 3.142 times 3.142 times f equals to 300 so let me punch calculator to confirm our answer so I'll point it this way. Um, this becomes 300 then um, by 2 times 3.142 and we get 47.7. Correct. So that's our frequency. Then how do we get the period? Because the question says, what is the period and the frequency? So I need to get period now. I said that period is what? 1 over frequency. So what is it going to be now? So to calculate my period now, period will be equal to 1 over, what is my frequency this time? 47.7. And when I do that, I get, that my calculator again, I will get 0, 0 0.020 seconds. So this is my period. All right. My period is 0 0.020. Why my frequency is 47.7 hertz. Just get the frequency, divide one by it. Because period is inverse of what? Frequency. Up next again, let's look at question B. Please, um, kindly copy out, pause the video and copy out the solution to question A. Why I rub off this board to solve question B. 
All right. The question B says, look at it. What is the root mean square? Remember that this is R M S. So they're asking me what is the root means root mean square's um, value of the what now voltage. What is the R M S value of the voltage? Do we have formula for R M S voltage? Yes, I gave you earlier. How do I use it now? So I'm going to use it now. So you can copy the solution to this. Why sub B now? All right. Alright, solve it now, solve it now, solve it now. The root mean square value of the voltage, voltage. So what is it? V root mean square. What do you say it is? V naught over what? Root 2. That's our formula. I remember that from the equation given to me, they said that V is equal to what? 150 sine 300 T. So that do comparison now, do comparison with our formula. V is equal to V naught sine W T. Now, if I do that comparison, what is V naught directly? You are seeing it there. V naught is what? 150. So therefore, V naught is equal to what now? 150 volt. So what will I do now? I'll put it here immediately, right? V root mean square becomes what? Now what's V naught? 150. Divide by what class? Root 2 for my formula. So what is that? V root mean square becomes V root mean square becomes what? I got my calculator again. Um 150 by okay, root 2. Root 2. So what do I get? What do I get? Of course, this is my answer. 106.06 volts. So that is how I solve for the root mean square voltage okay that is it um remember i said that this is the first video there will be the next video where we'll solve um a lot of questions like this question i solved now some people will be saying all these parameters are they useless no there are some questions we still use um those parameters to solve so in our next video this question will still reappear with plenty of questions under it. So we solve, we continue solving from where we start. All right. So for now, um, like I said, in the next video, a lot of questions will be solved. And after this, you can't see any question in ACC Qt, and um, you are scared of the question. All right. Remember to like. Remember to share remember to comment um you can even request for a video in the comment section always remember to keep comment respectful all right thank you and see you in our next video